Unless you brush your pet's teeth daily from puppy and kitten age, you will not brush off the tartar and plaque. It can be like concrete stuck to the enamel. Firedell Animal Hospital, 211 Woodpecker Road in Statesville. Call and schedule your appointment today at 704-876-2031. Attention homeowners, looking for new window coverings? Well, stop shopping online for blinds, shutters, shades, and drapes. Pick up the phone to reach your local Budget Blinds design expert. Budget Blinds expertly measures your space, installs beautiful window coverings, and backs it by the best warranty in the business, so you can sit back and relax. Budget Blinds carries anything you need for your windows, including blinds, shutters, shades, drapes, and accents. Budget Blinds goes above and beyond to ensure customer satisfaction, including competitive pricing. Have a favorite brand in mind? They carry over six exclusive brands to fit your style perfectly. Dial 704-872-6611 for your free consultation. All righty, good morning. It is 10 o'clock right on the button at WAME Statesville, and we've got, well, a few clouds kind of rolling through, but mostly it's going to be a gorgeous day, a little on the cold side, but it's going to be nice. 39, our temperature right now in the Clean Tech Weather Center high atop the Clock Tower building in beautiful downtown Statesville. And speaking of beautiful, what a great segue. Wow, yeah, that is great. (laughs) It's time for Downtown on Tap, featuring... uh, Marin Tomlin from the Downtown Statesville Development Corporation. Good morning. Good morning to you. How is everything? Fantastic. It is a little little chilly out there today, though. Just a touch. And where's the snow that we were uh, promised? It's in the mountains. <laughs> and, and in Raleigh. And in, in Raleigh. Raleigh. In Greensboro. Yeah. <laughs> and, and my daughter and uh, children are in <coughs> Norfolk, and they've got like two or three inches oh, yeah. in Norfolk. So uh, yeah, exactly. It, it looked like it was going to hit the coast too. Mm-hmm. So so it kind of went uh, around. I just like don't that, know if so. we're going to get any this year. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I know. We were. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were like, "If we could just time it perfectly, <laughs> we just we'll take just some perfect. on like Saturday night One into day. Sunday, and it'd be gone Monday. Yeah, in pretty blue skies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Or it can snow all at once on the ground, but yes. not on the roads. <laughs> right. So, right. Yeah. We're good. All, we're we good on that. We're asking around. for just a little bit. <laughs> That's right. So what's going on in downtown Statesville these days? You know, just a new year and lots of plans and and trying to see how we can move things forward and help all of our downtown businesses. And so I'm excited to have a couple um, business owners with me today. Um, I guess I'll just introduce everybody first. Sure. Um, And I'll start over here. Well, we've got Amanda Rogers, uh, owner of Molly Malone's. That's right. And her um, operations director. Wow. Um, yeah. Hannah Big Suarez. Title. Hannah Suarez. That's right. That's right. And uh, we have Brian Sahovich uh, with Edward Jones. So I was really excited. Um, I sent out an email blast to all of our downtown businesses yes. and said, okay, who's interested in, in getting on board? And <coughs> I've got a whole list of names and it's just like trying to fill them in. So there you go. we've got uh, some great. Um, shows that will be coming up in addition to today. So Very good. Um, excited to have Brian with us this morning. Um, Brian moved his office into downtown December of 2014. Yeah. Um, That's right. And I know he started a long time before that. So I was going to let him kind of give us his, his story of how <clears throat> he came to be with Edward Jones and into downtown. And his acting career. Yes. Yo, yes. Yes. I have heard about that as yes. well. So. Yeah. yeah. It's, was uh, it, was it, it one it and done, or have you continued? No, no. I did. I did five plays in two and a half years. Oh, and, so. yeah. and then you got. And then, and then, and then my wife said, you know, uh, if you want to stay married, you need to, you need to stay home. So, uh, it's, so yes, yeah, so I'm on a bit of a sabbatical, but I've been, you know, hopefully when things um, get back up and running, if we find the right, you know, yeah. role or the bug right hits play. You. That's right. Oh, the bug hit and hard. It drained your energy. <laughs> yeah. it, it, yes, when you're practicing two, three hours a night. Oh, I, yeah. On I weekends, and you know, imagine. you got two kids and and everything like that. It makes for right. a little bit difficult. But I had a blast doing it and yeah. met some awesome people. And so we'll do it again, definitely. Good, good, good. good, good. good, good. Well, in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> What You're, do you do every day? <laughs> well, good question. So, well, you had you had alluded to earlier a little bit about yeah. kind of how I got here, and and I actually grew up in a small little town in southern Indiana, and uh, I ended up working in Chicago. I was actually a tax accountant prior to this, and uh, the day that um, I was supposed to have my material in the mail to uh, sit for my CPA exam, I grabbed my trash can 
and I threw it in the trash and I was in the midst of trying to get hired by Edward Jones and I said, Edward Jones, please God, hire me. I didn't want to be a tax accountant anymore. Um, three tax seasons and I was done. So, oh, wow. so essentially I moved from Chicago to Statesville. You know, there wasn't much going on in Chicago. It was pretty, you know, kind of But with Edward town. Jones, like yes. they had hired you and they said, you need to go... Well, I was able to choose where I wanted to oh, live. Okay. Uh, my mom and dad live in Morkington, North Carolina. My brother lives in Waynesville. So I was able to, I didn't really want to be in the same town. Um, I, I'm in what I call the out of bopping in range. You know, my, my, <laughs> gonna bop yes. in. yeah, my mom yeah. can't bop in. It's not my dad. It's my mom. I'm a little folk, you know, so she, but you know, so, we, but, but, but I came here because we, we have, have a, a mom like that. Yes. Right. <laughs> and I have an awesome relationship with my family. My dad's my concert buddy. We go to a lot of concerts together and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, I didn't want to live nearby. So that's how I picked Statesville. Well, okay. But why were you in Chicago? I was doing taxes. So you had you had you grew up in North Carolina in, in Southern Indiana. Oh, okay. Moved. So they were okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So they were in Indiana. <laughs> they had migrated down here. Okay. I was in Chicago working, and then decided when gotcha. I started the Edward Jones office that I was going to uh, go okay. here to Statesville. So actually, I drove through downtown, ironically enough, because I grew up in a yeah. town with a really cool downtown. And that was and in I, what year? And that was in. Uh, 2000 yeah. when you know we were weren't the same downtown as we are today which yeah. this is an awesome downtown which is one of the reasons why I wanted to be here mm -hmm. and so you know all everything we've done in this downtown has been phenomenal so yeah so that's a little bit about my history wow. by the way uh, Jim Dooley says uh, hey Brian how's my money <laughs> <laughs> Jim Dooley <laughs> yeah Jim, Jim. Dooley. Bob's not, not Tom Dooley. Oh, Jim Dooley. It's, Bob's it's doing great. Yeah. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> so with Edward Jones, tell me like what, what do you do with Edward Jones? Great question. So really if you if you think about it this way, I get that question a lot. And and you know, people could say they're a financial advisor, but what does that really mean? Mm. Okay. So that's kind of vague. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you what I really do. I help successful people get to a work optional lifestyle oh. as fast as possible. I like that. I yeah. like that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, one may say, well, Brian, I'm already retired. I'm there. Okay. Well, with retirees, this is how I help those people get to a work optional lifestyle, but this is how I, how I also help them, how the retirees. So these two groups of people, this is essentially what I do. First and foremost, I help people organize their wealth in a way that they can read it and easily understand it. Okay, that's good. All right. Second thing is I help people build their wealth so that they can keep more money in their pocket and less to the government. Mm, my back, better. My yeah. background helps with that being a former accountant. <laughs> oh, that's okay. The third thing is I help people protect their wealth because sometimes life events happen, you know, unexpected death or disability, and people need to have a plan to protect their wealth. That's the third thing I do. Mm -hmm. The fourth thing I do is I help people pass along their wealth to the people they love or entities that they care about, such as charities, in a way that we can do it for hopefully, you know, minimal cost and obviously little to no taxes. That's the goal, too. So those are the four things that I do to help those two groups of people. Wow. I've, I've been writing notes down. I see that. <laughs> Um, so do you help people get the wealth? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I actually had a business owner client sit across the, sit across the desk for me one time. And he said, Brian, he goes, I have figured out exactly what you do. He goes, I'm really good at making money and you're really good at telling me where to put it. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So I do help connect business owners to other people, yeah. obviously to help their business, you know, yeah. you know, expand. But ultimately, you know, I'm not I'm not out there doing what they do. So I, I try to stay in my lane. So what would be the difference between and you may have touched on this and I just missed it. What's the difference between you and, uh, say, a stockbroker? OK, so stockbroker is a little bit more defined. In fact, actually, financial advisors a long time ago used to be called a stockbroker because mm -hmm. most of the time that's what they dealt with was stocks. We didn't have a lot of the innovative products that we have today that's able to help people fit their needs. So essentially, that's kind of why they were called a stockbroker is because they mostly traded in stocks. Now, truth be told, when I started 20 years ago, the kind of advice and the guidance that I give today is a lot more extensive than what I did then, partially because we have much better planning tools. 
See, the one thing is people think they're going to take their IRA to somebody or their, you know, whatever they have and say, please tell me what I should own. What investments should I have in my IRA? Mm. Quite frankly, if that's all you're paying an advisor for, you're really not getting served very well. You know those four things I just mentioned? Mm -hmm. That's the area where I really help add value on the people's lives. That's the difference. Wow. So very cool. That is. <clears throat> so with all that's going on in the world, what are you recommending to your clients right now? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> well, there's a few things going on in the world. So, <laughs> all right. No, that's a great question. And, and I'll tell you what, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a spin on that a little bit. And I'm actually going to uh, pose it this way. Here are three questions that every investor should ask themselves. All right. I'm ready. I got my pen going. So the, <laughs> so the first, I'm going to go in detail after I mention them, but here are the three questions. What percent of your investments are designed to provide you a rising income? That's the first question. Mm -hmm. The second question is, what are your plans to take advantage of the next downturn? And then the third question is, when was the last time you stress tested your investments? So let me dive into these a little bit. All right. All right. So, so you all know that the cost of living obviously is going up, right? Uh, yes. Well, for retirees, it actually goes up greater than what, say, somebody my age, okay, really? or Marin's age, okay, maybe not Billy, okay, <laughs> but all right. <laughs> But it's just, right. it's just white hair. That's, just, all. that's, right. that's, that's all, all it is. is. That's right. Now, but think about this for a second. Retirees tend to have more services done for them because they can't do it themselves. That's right. And they also, and there's a greater demand on that. And also healthcare costs are rising faster than inflation. So wouldn't you say it's important for, for just like you get a raise? Okay. Wouldn't you say it's important for retirees to also get a raise in their income? I would. All right, there you go. Sounds okay. Like it's, it's the only way they can survive. Exactly. Because the thing is, you can't count on Social Security. All right. So the fact of the matter is, is what percent of your investments are designed to provide you a rising income? That's what you need to ask yourself. The second, the second topic, let's, let's kind of lead into that. So first off, I'm going to give you a little inside information. All right. Uh, on what's going on these days. So there have been a number of people in this community that took advantage in a good way of the stock market downturn last year, mm -hmm. all right? Now, this is what we know about downturns. First off, we know they're normal. We know they're followed by upturns and we know upturns last significantly longer. So that's what we know about downturns. So the question I would ask you is this, what are your plans to take advantage of the next downturn? Now, I did some research since January 1, 2000, we have had the longest and deepest downturns in the last 70 years. Mm. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. We had, a, we had the tech bubble burst, which is directly followed by 9-11. That was the longest downturn. Then, of course, we had the deepest downturn in the last 70 years, which was the Great Recession. Okay? Like 2008, 9? Exactly. Yeah. 10. Yep. <laughs> that was the deepest downturn. So we had the longest and the deepest downturns in the last 20 years that we've had in the last, in really about the last 70 to 100 years, wow. okay? Now, here's what I do. I coach people on how to take advantage of downturns, both from a mental and an investment standpoint, okay? Mental is good. If people jumping off buildings. Yes, yes, not good. It's a bad okay. Thing. The good thing is there's not a lot of tall buildings in Statesville. That's okay. True. And so and most of my clients live in ranch houses, so we're, we're in good shape in good there. Shape. But the fact of the matter is I can't be beside my clients when they're reading the newspaper or looking at the media. Mm. All right. So from a mental standpoint, if my clients understand what's normal, they have less anxiety when downturns occur. Now from a from a physical standpoint, um, or from an investment standpoint, you take advantage of it because you know how to invest during downturns. It's not just buying low. There's actually strategies that you can implement based upon the duration or the length of the average downturn. So there's. Okay. So are people? So you're not projecting the downturn. Correct. You, just as it happens, you're you're directing them how to manage their investments 
and take advantage of and it. Take, and take okay? advantage of it. Yes. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a really good advisor, and I'm a lousy fortune teller. Okay? <laughs> so so it's, it's it buy low, sell high? Is well, that's talking? part of it. Okay. But the other part of it is the average downturn typically lasts seven to nine months. Mm -hmm. So this past downturn that happened last year, my clients had a strategy going into it as to how they were going to take advantage of it. They knew beforehand when it occurs, and they and I'm already oh, talking okay. to my clients about that saying. right now. Sure. When the next one occurs, it's not if, it's when. Mm -hmm. This is the plan of which we're how we're going to take advantage of it, so they know in advance. Okay, so that's a, that's kind of what I was wondering yeah. how you. So you just have the plan in advance, and when it does happen, you implement whatever you Correct. guys have already worked out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Now, here's the thing: is now that you now that you know a little bit about our we've talked about preparing for downturns. This kind of leads to the third topic. Now, here's, you know, the world we're living in today, this is what investors should remember. Here's the key. It's really important for investors to differentiate themselves, differ, differentiate themselves from investors versus traders. There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. I work with investors, not traders, okay? Remember this, when markets reach all-time highs, which by the way, they regularly do, that is the best time to stress test your investments. So the third question you should ask yourself is, when was the last time you stress tested your investments? Okay. So those- I have no idea. <laughs> well, so here, what, is, what is the stress test for your investment? What are you doing? Great question. This is where I tend to get a lot of second opinions. When I ask people this question, when was the last time you stress tested them? And nobody typically has an answer for that. All right. The best way to do the best way to do this is to study what investments they have. My clients I already do this with. Mm. To study what investments they have. And there's a there's something called the 2000 acid, acid test. Okay. So you remember how I mentioned we had the longest downturn and the deepest downturn since January 1 of 2000? Mm -hmm. So what I do is is I stress test people's investments against those types of events, essentially looking back in the past to see how they handled those types of events, okay? Mm -hmm. Because not only those time, but not only those two events happened, but we've had two wars, okay? We've had a little bit of political turmoil here and there, okay? Just a touch. A little Just bit. a touch, <laughs> okay? We had the Great Recession, had the biggest housing downturn Gosh, and I'm one of the biggest unemployment rates, <laughs> okay? Sorry. Right? Yeah. So all these events have occurred. If your investments can make it through that, then you're in good shape. Yeah. But I'll tell you, when I stress test people's investments, that's typically not the case. Mm -hmm. All right. And not, this isn't heart surgery. Okay. But I take it that seriously. So we stress test people's hearts when we want to make sure they're healthy. Right. That's right. And see other things. Why shouldn't you do it with your investments? Good point. I agree. There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm just flabbergasted. I'm a little, I mean, that's, that's, that's good information. Really good information. Great. Yeah. Definitely the stress test. So, uh, <laughs> so when can she come see you? <laughs> That's the big question. Yeah, so how can people reach you? Well, there you go. Good yeah. job, Billy. Great. Okay, great question. The easiest way is, is I've got, I have an awesome staff person, um, Leanne Barkley. She's been with me for, I've known her for almost 20 years, mm. and she's been with me for 17. Wow. And I get, simply cannot exist in my office without her. She's phenomenal. Yeah. I'd call Leanne at 704-838-0855. Do that again. 704-838-0855. Got it. So, or you can send us an email at brian. I'll spell it for you. Yeah. Thank you. S-O-H-O, -O, V as in Victor, I-C-H, at edwardjones.com. Brian Sohovich. Brian dot dot Soho. Soho, Excuse me. At Walter. Uh, at Walter. At <laughs> edwardjones.com. Edward Brian Jones. dot Sohovich right. at edwardjones.com. Of course, you can just look it up on the internet. I'm the only right. Sohovich around. Google it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You are. Uh, all you got to do is type in Sohovich and pretty much you'll find Edward Jones next well, to you. Well, let me ask so. you this one question. Um, why did you why did you decide to go with Edward Jones? Because there's a lot of financial, yeah. I don't want to say institution because that people well, refer to a bank, but mm -hmm. why did you want to go with Edward Jones and work for that company? It's a great question. Um, I will tell you, I did some research on him and luckily I had, uh, ironically enough, 
my uh, father was a financial advisor. He had totally switched careers at 45 and got out of being a turnaround crisis management consultant and, and became Edward Jones, really switched careers. He was working harder than he ever had, but he loved what he did. Mm -hmm. And him and I are like, we're like two peas in a pod. When, when I was dating Carrie, my mom looked at me and my dad standing off in a distance and she said, you like that man? And, and Carrie's like, sure. And she was pointing to my dad. She said, good, because that's what you're going to get in about 20 years. Okay. <laughs> so the fact is, is I, I did, I looked in Edward Jones and, and I'll tell you what, here's, here's what I can tell you. They were the best fit for me because of how well they trained their people, mm -hmm. how much support they gave us from not only an on, we have, I admit, I had a mentor. I literally had a 20 year vet that was a mentor to me the moment I came to Statesville. Wow. And he, and he helped change my career. He really helped, he helped me during some really tough times. Yeah. I mean, think about it. I started during that first longest downturn, okay? Yeah. So he was right there alongside me. Um, we have, for the last 16 years, been a top 10 company in the country to work for. Mm -hmm. And uh, for nine straight years, we've been the number one brokerage firm to work for in the industry. So. I love what I do. I found, I tell you what, at, at 23, I discovered my passion yeah. and I hit a home run. I've worked for a phenomenal company. I'm tickled pink. So that's awesome. Thank that you. That's awesome. Yeah. A good thing. So if anybody's interested in getting into the business, go talk to Brian. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Be glad. Or that. yeah, either one or Google doing a stress test on your, uh, on your financials. And so. what's yes. your, what's your exact street address? It's on uh, 140 North center street. Right. And I'm in the Barnard Lippert building which is on the corner there, right across from the Gordon's, I kind of call it the art park, you know, the furniture <laughs> store, That's old right. furniture yeah. store. The sculpture garden. The sculpture yes. garden. Um, yeah. And then the CVS and, you know, the Twisted Candy Oak Corn is right and, there, uh, too. And Molly Malone. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Molly Malone's is just down the yeah. street. That's so, right. yeah, so I'm a, about a two-minute walk from here. Awesome. So. Awesome. Cool. Well, so excited to have you and just love having you in downtown. So thank you for being here. Thank you very much. All right. So next up, we have... The, uh, the, the fashionistas. The fashion mogul. <laughs> the mogul. Uh, I feel like it's, I'm on a Facebook Live right now. How about that? Because it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how things kind of have transitioned oh, for yes, you. So, absolutely. Um, so Amanda uh, Rogers, uh, owner of Molly Malone's, and I'm sure a lot of people want to call you Molly. Molly. Malone. <laughs> they call and say, is Molly there today? No, yeah. she no longer works here. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep her name. Um, so, yeah, so I, I just wanted to... Uh, Love having you in downtown Statesville, and it took a while for you to get here, but you've always, you. you live here, you I grew do. up here, so, mm -hmm. um, and, and happy to have uh, Hannah Suarez here, who's the operations director, uh, newly with Molly yes. Malone, right? Yes, she is so new this week. congratulations there. You crack the whip. You probably need to um, go see um, Brian to start with the your stress test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right at the beginning. Yes. So, um, so yeah, uh, tell me, like, when did you start Molly Malone's? We started in September of 2005, and my very first store was actually two doors down from here. It used to be called Body Elements, and oh. we sold that. So it was in downtown, so you got to give me a little credit there. And it was right before I, it so was I before, came just here before, in 2006. This was like, yep, yeah, yeah, it huh. was right before that. So we started in downtown Statesville. I did not know that. We used to do airbrush tanning and jewelry and everything all together, so we've definitely evolved for sure. Yeah. Um, I am originally from Statesville, born and raised. Uh, when I first started my business, our very first store was in Hickory, North Carolina, when I was living in Bethlehem. And see, I worked for the Catawba County Chamber. Oh, wow. And I can go. remember, I think that you did a ribbon cutting. Yep. And we I was there did. for your ribbon cutting. I have cutting, to dig so those yeah. pictures up. I have those pictures. <laughs> yep. So 2005, we started Molly okay. Malone's Boutique, and um, our, first, our first store was in Hickory. Mm -hmm. Then we opened our second location in 2008, right before I gave birth to my daughter, um, a Mooresville location. Then we opened a okay. third location in Huntersville, and then we opened a store in Concord, and then we opened a new store in downtown Statesville. That's right. Yep. Wow. I know. Yeah. That's a lot. How many more stores do we have coming? <laughs> <laughs> But Depends you, on what Miss Hannah can do over here. But this goes back to, uh, I just say Sahovich all the time. That's I fine. Know, Sahovich. Uh, is you started these stores when the economy wasn't all that great. How'd yeah. you do that? Well, 
Well, when I actually started the company, I was working for Reebok and Rockport Shoes full time. Ah. I had um, started my stores in September, and by February of the next year in 2006, I had was doing well enough to quit my full time job. I was traveling the country in sales, and the stores back, you know, when we first started, there was no boutiques around. There was no mm. ladies shops like what we yeah. offer, and it just took off like crazy. So, so you had a retail background? Yes, I absolutely. Okay. I, that's all I've ever done is retail mm -hmm. sales. Definitely can sell some stuff, talker. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, so I've always, I worked at Rack Room Shoes when I was 16 years old in shoe department and <laughs> sold lots of shoes and just kept going. Yeah. So, like, what were your goals when you first started the, the first store in Hickory? I mean, you just wanted to have your own? Well, or? I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'll go back to kind of my early childhood days is my mom always told me, she's like, I know you're going to have a store. I know you're going to have a store because I would always play cash register at home as a little girl. <laughs> so sure enough, she's right again. Um, but I, I just think that um, you know, I was in sales and love what I did yeah. and talking to people and helping people with customer service and just love it. Where did the name come from? I knew that question was going to come yeah, up. I right. actually had a college professor um, here at Mitchell. I took an accounting class at Mitchell. <laughs> failed accounting twice. I'm not sure how I own a retail store, but I failed accounting twice. Um, and I've become really good friends with one of my professors here. He was a communications teacher, which, you know, back in the day, I was not very... Um, like not a really good talker. I was very shy. I did not like to get in front of the camera. So he helped me with that. We kind of lost connection. And when I had reached out to him after selling my first store, for some reason, he always called me Molly. And I was like, okay. And he's like, Molly Malone's. It's Irish. You have an Irish background, Molly Malone's. And we drew this little logo. It kind of looked like me, they say. But no fancy story, but we just kind of ran a story, with it. story, though. And that it is works. A, yeah. So, yep. And I located him when we had lost connection. He was a communications teacher in Korea. So I had to go oh, through wow. his family to get back in touch with him and everything. So he came up with a name and it worked. And there here, you we, are. here we are 16 years later. That's awesome. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Five stores. That's a lot to manage. It is. Very a much so. Manage. Let's talk about that stress test. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> the other kind of stress yeah, test, right? Woo. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about what the store offers and how maybe that's evolved over your Gosh, what are we going on? 16, 16, 16 years. years. Mm -hmm. So originally when I first opened the business, we were selling handbags and jewelry. We did not offer as much clothing as we do today. Um, how the business kind of started, I'll tell you that too, is me and my mom, my mom, you know, growing up as a single mom, trying to make ends meet, we would drive around in her little minivan and we would sell handbags and jewelry at doctor's offices, um, offices like yours, just mm -hmm. all over hair salons, and it just kind of kept growing. So then I decided I was going to open a store. But we offer, um, the good thing I think about us is our price ranges are very affordable. Mm -hmm. So you can look good, you can feel good, and it's at an affordable price. Um, pretty much everything we offer is $50 and under. For the most part, it's probably $40 and under. Um, like the tops that we're wearing today are like $32, $35. So you can be cute mm -hmm. and feel good about yourself too. But we offer a lot of name brand items for you guys for your ladies over there you can come in and get some jewelry for valentine's day oh that's right I thought you meant, <laughs> there's a couple things coming you had up men's soon. clothing and i was like we, I don't we do recall. not have men's clothing do we have new really? t-shirts um men's clothing from honey hole we got some men's apparel oh, there in go. there some men's simply southern t-shirts and jackets but now that's my wife right there yep. simply southern you just stuff. bring her right on in she loves that stuff yeah. yep so we offer a wide variety of everything from home decor to gifts, jewelry, clothing, yeah. and we offer regular sizes plus extended sizes. So, Oh, that's great. That's great. That's a great way to put it. Extended sizes. Yep. Extended Not sizes. large. No. Extended sizes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. He cracks me up. So, um, so how, tell me, how did you guys deal with, the, um, with COVID and how did that impact all the stores mm. well let's see where do i start so when i first um well you know i was pregnant during covid so well, I, I was yeah, kinda, I just really found that out <laughs> i was kind of stuck in a little hole like as a hermit i couldn't go anywhere i was worried i was going to get covid and then get sick and you know the baby you know worried about the baby so we basically just um once we found out that we had to shut down we kind of just took a took a new um not a detour but we took a new turn on how we were going to do business and like i said when i first started 20 years ago i was very shy did not like to get on the camera did not like to talk so one night in my house i had this idea just to sit down 
Um, and I thought I would sell some jewelry on a Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And it went crazy. So during COVID, we just started pulling everything out of the stores. And we would take it to the warehouse. We now have a warehouse in Statesville as well on the other side of town, Marksville Highway. So we just went around to the stores and loaded up the cars and packed them full of right. merchandise and brought it and sold them on Facebook Lives. And it was great. And I think the ladies watching us now, they are still supporting me on Facebook Lives because they're nervous to get out with COVID. But yeah. um, it's definitely been very challenging. Um, you know, with the employees trying to keep them oh, that's, you yeah. know, employed and occupied. But the Facebook Lives is what's got us through COVID. But you've always offered online sales, right? We do have online sales, and we are trying to focus more on that now. Mm -hmm. It's really hard with my business because I do all of the buying. It's all hand-picked. We don't buy in bulk. We do one of every item and one size of everything, so it keeps the women coming yeah. back every week. They're like, what do you have new? What's new today? What do you have mm -hmm. hanging in that stock room? Um, so <laughs> it just kind of keeps them you know, looking for something new, but the, the Facebook yeah. Lives, I think, just reached a whole different market, and then trying to put everything online, we're still kind of working through that. Okay, so. okay. Well, um, so that's interesting. I know for a while there, you had been looking for another place because the Statesville store had been like the where all of your product came, yep. and then you then you distribute it from there to. We outgrew that space yeah. right yeah. very quickly. Yeah. And now we're outgrowing the warehouse. Oh my goodness! Because oh my we're housing awesome. so much online and Facebook yeah. Live inventory. Well, that's so. exciting that that you were able to kind of um, reconfigure and 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 still reach your clients and right. and, and make things work during. The COVID. Yeah. Well, I the think COVID. we just have such a loyal following, I think, especially from where I started in Hickory. Those ladies support me. I mean, all my ladies in all five cities support me. But, um, you know, my first door being in Hickory, those ladies know me very well. They all still text my phone and tell me what they want and what they need. And then being from Statesville, yeah. everybody here knows me and my mom. So, you know, I think that's a great thing. So awesome. this is the thing that, that I don't understand about oh women there's lots of things i don't understand about women <laughs> okay uh, but this one is you know i'll say uh, way back back when your mama and i was, was young yep <laughs> there was uh, right across the street over here where um the uh cbd uh native uh, uh native suitable. Suitable. thank you very much yes. i appreciate that uh was a store called mary and travis okay and it was a woman's clothing store okay and uh, you'd have a certain clientele of women that would go into that store because it was their kind of clothes. Right. And then you go, now you got, you know, you go to Belk. Well, a certain kind of woman shops at Belk, certain kind of woman shops at Coles. You know, something. So, how do you pick who your demographic is? I mean, if, yeah, uh, who do you try and cater to That's with, with a, their shop? If an yeah. 85-year-old woman, you know, is looking for clothes, does she come to you or does she go to uh, an old established store like a Belks or something like that? Or is it a 24-year-old that is looking for fashion? How do you – how do you have – how well, does that work? Exactly. I will say our average customer is anywhere from like 35 to 45. That is our average customer base. Okay. Um, however, we cater to all ages. We have something for everyone. We have, um, you know, if you're a little bit more conservative, but you still want to be, you know, nice looking and trendy things with prints. But our average age is between 30 and 45. But we do have that more mature lady, the Very 80 nice. year old lady. Good word, um, mature. You would be really surprised once you get the customers in the dressing room and handing them things that you feel like that will look great on them but you would be very surprised on the variety of things that we offer we do offer products for younger girls as well um in clothing and other products name brand products as well so i feel like we have every age covered from the little teeny girl to the grandmother i think it just so, depends on their style yeah, you know, I, guess their style. Style. yeah. yeah I guess that's true yeah i guess that's true as a father of two girls i just want them to be covered up well i was gonna say <laughs> we are more <laughs> oh yes uh, no, amen I, I think there's a, you know this <laughs> yep. girls these days it's like Woo, you know, uh, oh, you it is so stressful i want to oh. keep that under i want to look like <laughs> miley cyrus yeah, yeah. my <laughs> daughter <laughs> is in dance and i'll be honest with you it's the hardest thing for me is the clothing that these people wear where to dance oh my oh, goodness yeah. it just gives me a heart attack yeah. but yeah. for us i will say we are more um 
we're trendy, but we're also classy and elegant. We mm. don't have what he's referring to, um, <laughs> a little more risque, I guess. Right. Um, so we are, um, I feel like we're very classy women. We try to run a very classy boutique from the products that we offer. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. so obviously it's it's great that uh, you've grown so much that you've had to hire an operations director, which is excellent. I mean, that's yep. fabulous that you're that successful. And so, the fact that she's I know, from yeah, I want to take let yeah. Hannah say a couple words. Yeah, um, I've been around Amanda. It all started back in college. A uh, neighbor recruited me to be starting nannying Paisley when Paisley was. It's probably it, been five or six years ago. We go way at back. least <laughs> at least probably seven eight even. Yep. And so then I started babysitting and then started working in the stores a little bit. And Amanda's been pretty much hounding me <laughs> since we met to come to work. And once I had a baby that's about four months old yep. and I decided that um, I needed a career change, a little bit more flexibility in time, I called her and said, hey, give me a call back. I'm ready to go to work. What do you What do you need? Wow. Well, she was working for me in the warehouse yeah. while she was pregnant during Yeah, COVID. we were hermit crabs together all last yep. summer. <laughs> we were pregnant together, so, um, so that was good. But really, really excited to have Hannah on board. I think she's going to do amazing things here. Um, I love her attitude and just how she can handle things and how she presents herself. I think she's going to be a great fit for the company. That really is important. And so you're going to be, yeah. like, managing... Yeah. all of the, the I'm trying to get with the girls and make sure we're all on board and try to get everybody the same because you've got people from five different cities yeah. and it's only one Amanda she is, but she needs to do more of the back work right. and the warehouse work and so myself and another wonderful employee Mandy are really working together to get everybody on board and make sure that we can help the girls. How can we help them? You'll be their point of contact. For yes. I'm going to be the communicator. Right. Yes. Well, trying give to... me a little bit of a break. I yeah. Guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've not well, had a vacation to, in if, 16 if, years. <laughs> if you're the buyer, that's tough. It's a full time job between that's the tough. buying, the Facebook lives, packing the online orders. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do it all from the payroll to the hiring. I do everything. We do have another girl that's not here today. Mandy, she does an amazing job on our social yes. media page. Um, but Hannah is basically going to get our team back to our customer service 101, which we built our company on, which I built my company on. Yes. Customer service, when you are walking into a small ladies' fashion boutique, those ladies are looking to, especially during this time of day, they are looking to connect with you. They are looking to talk to you, share their problems with you, and yeah. you, they just need a listening ear. It's called retail therapy, too, <laughs> but I think it's just getting yeah. all of our team on the same page because there's not enough of me to go around and that's where hannah's going to come on you know come throughout the stores and visit the stores and work with those girls teach them what customer service looks like and let's get it back to where we were 16 years ago so mm. we can there's a reason the and there's a reason why everybody comes back to amanda because her customer service is excellent every time she's in the store right and, and they connect the with her the independent mm -hmm. can offer that a chain store doesn't offer. Right. So you, yeah, we, you must speak to the customer. You must help the yeah. customer. You must show them Those products. relationships. We're trying to take mm -hmm. them from a shopper to a reoccurring a customer to a relationship to... So the ones call you and say, do you have anything? Like my mother-in-law, she's that kind of shopper. <laughs> She'll text uh, you and say, do you have anything new that I need to come and check out? <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, I get text messages at midnight saying, hey, do you have this in stock? Do you have this in stock? And, you know, I'm just so used to responding. So, yeah. So that's what, and, and I wish that, uh, this is a universal thing that, that you would figure out a simplified size thing for women that would help guys out a lot. You know, is it, you got, well, you got, you could either go get the numbers, you know, one, two, six, 12 yeah. and all that, or, or you can go S M X L extended extended l but jewelry but that's fits what every, our girls yeah. should be doing when the you guys walk in the store especially for valentine's day mother's day christmas absolutely our ladies in the store need to know their products yes. so when you walk in and you're describing your wife hey is she my size absolutely yes or a little bigger this is the size you need to purchase in this item because a lot of our items do run big like a lot of the clothing these days runs really big yeah see the, the clothing makers i think are changing the to, to make us feel better <laughs> yeah after covid <laughs> to make us for sure feel yes. better <laughs> about our size yeah, and you wouldn't want to take your wife home the wrong size you know i did that yeah so, so. I, I generally well, you're still married so that's a great <laughs> no, thing I, I generally don't buy uh sandra 
close because of that fact. I'll buy her a gift certificate. Now, I have one guy, and I know you know him very well, Mr. Brian Burgess. Oh. Mr. Brian Burgess, if you're watching, I love you, guy. He is the most amazing man ever. He comes in the store, buys his wife a full wardrobe, and he does a fantastic job at it. Does he? But that is our job. That's what our ladies are there for. They are there to help you guys and the women as well. Okay. And jewelry always fits. Jewelry always fits. Jewelry does always (laughs) fit. Yeah, Valentine's Day. Lots of that, that yep. everybody. Absolutely. We have gift certificates too on our website and in our store. There you so go. So tell people how they can how they can reach you online and okay. social and all so, that. So um, it's mollymalonesboutique.com. Again, we have five stores in Mooresville, Hickory, Concord, Huntersville, and Statesville. Um, we do Facebook Lives every week. You can shop on there as well. You can shop our website, or you can just come and see us in a store. We would love to see you back in a store. Wear your mask and come in and see us. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, thank you. Sounds good. And, awesome. Uh, thanks thank so you. much for thanks being for here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Things happening in beautiful downtown Statesville. And, uh, you know, there's always something going on. We're, Being on the yeah. board of directors now. <laughs> That's right. So um, one of the things we're focused on for February is we're going to be a, a love local campaign, and and just to remind the community to love local on your mm-hmm. all of your businesses and like and that. show them your support and yeah. you know buy all your Valentine's gifts local and and all that sort of stuff. That's so, awesome. Um, Lots of good stuff. That'll here. be rolling out on February first. And if someone wants to find out about Statesville, downtownstatesville.com. How about that? It's amazing how simple that can be. That's right. There's no <laughs> dots in there or anything like that, so except for the com. All right. Thanks so much, Marion. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Brian. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Molly. There you go. I know. All hey, right. I've been called worse, right? <laughs> this is one of the capital bad thing. Man. <laughs> Think of all the fads you've seen over the years. If they were meant to last, you'd still be wearing platform shoes, driving a Firebird, playing Pac-Man. But fads don't last, and that's true in finance, too. So why do many big financial institutions promote the latest investment fads? Sure, they look good now.